Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. The book of Revelation may be the most important prophetic book in the Holy Bible because it is the final prophetic book. It is my personal favorite and as we go through this great book of Revelation, one chapter at a time, one verse at a time, we're going to discover many of the things that the future has in store for the human race. And that is the purpose of the book of Revelation. So God Almighty has not left the human race in darkness. He has uh, revealed to us through his written word exactly what he's going to do about all the things that plagues man in the future. And so with that, let's dive straight into this great book of Revelation with the very first chapter and the very first verse. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, before I read the second verse, it's very important that we understand what the word revelation means. So when we look it up in the Strong's Exhausted Concordance of the Holy Bible, we find it's the Greek word 602, and it says disclosure. But it says it comes from the Greek word 601, and that is the word reveal. So when we look up the word reveal in the Strong's Concordance 601, we see that word made up of two Greek words, meaning to take off the cover, that is disclose. So when people tell you that the book of Revelation is a sealed book, they show their ignorance of our Father's word, because the very word revelation means to reveal something, to disclose, to show us something, to take off the cover. And so the revelation of Jesus Christ is exactly that. Christ unfolding through his word the events that must take place before he returns to set up his kingdom here on earth. And I want you to notice it says this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Very important. Because in many Bibles, you will see as a subtitle when you get to Revelation, the revelation of St. John the Divine or John the Revelator. And that is not true. It is not John's revelation. It is Christ's revelation and Christ's revelation alone. Okay? Again, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see that? whose true name in the Hebrew tongue is Yeshua HaMashiach, okay? He's the one revealing what we're going to learn in this book to the human race. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God, his father, Jehovah, gave unto him. Why? Why did he do it? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So John is simply the apostle that Christ used 
to reveal the future to and to record what he showed him. Okay, so John is not the revelator. I'm sorry. Anyway, he sent it to his servant, John, verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So John is just an eyewitness of the things that Christ did when he walked this earth and also the things that Christ revealed to him in this book. Okay, he's not to be honored with some title as the revelator. No, Jesus and Jesus alone is the revelator. All right, verse 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, referring to this final book of prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, or in it, for the time is at hand. So he starts off with a blessing. He says that you and I will be blessed if we read and hear the words of this prophecy. Not only hearing, but doing. We have to be doers of the word and not hearers only because if we are only hearers of God's word and not doers, we're wasting our time. We're not going to be saved into his eternal kingdom. Don't fool yourself. If you're down here and you're a person who goes to church on Saturday or on Sunday and you sit down there and listen to Reverend or the pastor preach a good message and, hey, man, and that's enough for you, and you go back out and live like a devil for the other six days of the week and come back and just sit down to get your ears tickled. If you're a person who reads the Bible and you think it's a book of good stories and they're very entertaining, but you never apply the counsel that's given and, the, and you never obey the commandments that are given, then you are on your way to hell. Okay? That's why he says, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein or written in it. And then he tells you why. For the time is at hand. What does he mean by that? The return of Jesus Christ is coming. Every single day we're getting closer and closer to the return of Jesus. And if you and I are not found in obedience when that time comes, we're doomed. Anyway, uh, he continues, verse 4, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now, he doesn't mean the whole continent of Asia, like, you know, we describe it today. Because when we look up the word Asia in the Strong's Concordance, it says Asia Minor, or usually only its western shore. So this would be the area that uh, we call Turkey today. That one little area, okay? John to the seven churches which are in Asia Minor or in what we know as modern day Turkey. He says, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Uh, that was uh, verse four, verse five. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Verse 6. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So John starts out the letter with a greeting to the seven churches saying that grace, which means undeserved kindness, unmerited favor be unto you, to the seven churches, and peace. And then when he says, from him which is and which was and which is to come, that's the Father, Jehovah, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, a reference to the Holy Spirit. And then notice he says in verse 5, and from Jesus Christ. So you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, what we call the Trinity. The blessings come from all three because those three are on one accord, okay? He says of Jesus that he is the faithful witness. Christ did what he came into this world to do. 
he accomplished his task. That's why he's called the faithful witness. And here in this great book of Revelation, we see even after he had died for our sins and went back to heaven, he's still ministering to us through this letter. So he is a faithful witness. And the first begotten of the dead. He is the very first who was raised from the world of the dead. Don't believe that nonsense that Enoch and Elijah went to heaven before Jesus because the Bible does not teach that. I have a Bible study on that if you want to go into debt. Christ was the very first one who rose. And he had to be because he came to make it possible for us to be forgiven of all our sins and declared righteous so we could receive the kingdom. So he's the first the God of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. The reason why he calls him the prince of the kings of the earth because when he accomplishes his task, he inherit the kingdom of God. He is going to be the king of kings and lord of lords when he returns to set up his kingdom here on earth. And notice it says unto him, speaking of the son, that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Let that sink in. A lot of times we hear it, but we don't really think about it. He came into this world that he had a share in creating with the Father and the Holy Spirit for the sole purpose of dying for our sins so that you and I could have eternal life. Jesus did that for us. And he made everything possible through that precious blood that he shed at Calvary. Only he could have. And that's why the Father called him the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. And he says he's washed us from our sins in his own blood. And verse 6 says, and has made us kings and priests unto God and our Father. Now he's speaking of the future. Some of us will be kings and priests. And we will reign with Jesus in his kingdom for 1,000 years and then forever in the eternal stage, okay? So he gives the greetings from the Godhead, and then he says in verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. So he says, whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, or whether you want it or not, he is coming. And when he does, everyone living will see him coming in the, in the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. And the uh, faithful are going to be shouting praise and full of joy because he's coming to set things right. The wicked are going to be wailing because they are going to realize they have been deceived and they have been worshiping the wrong Christ because the Antichrist comes before the true Christ. So there's going to be two types of wailing going on. And when he says, every eye shall see him, that means the ones who are living during that time and every person after that who has already died out of the world will see him because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things we've done in our body, whether good or bad. So everybody is going to see him at some time. Verse 8. Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Notice Christ can make the same claim that the Father makes. Because Christ is God, just like his Father, he never had a beginning and he will never have an end. Don't ask me to explain that, because if you cannot explain how the Father never had a beginning and never will have an end, then you don't need to understand how the Son is just like his Father. That's Christ making that statement. He says in verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, that's John speaking there. John says in this letter, he says, 
Brothers, I am locked up on that prison island of Patmos. That's what Patmos was. Tradition says that when Satan moved his people through the Caesars of Rome to start killing the apostles and getting rid of all the Christians, they tried to kill John. They put him in a big pot of boiling hot oil, but God preserved him. So since they couldn't kill him, they put him on the prison island of Patmos. When you look up the word Patmos in the Strong's Concordance, you see it says Patmos, an island in the Mediterranean. And so this is where Christ came to reveal his revelation to John while he was on that prison island. And he was locked up for being a faithful servant of the Lord. Anyway, verse 10, John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Verse 11, John says he heard that voice, great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Um, the word Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. And Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. So he's simply saying, I am the first and the last, okay? I am God Almighty, okay? The Creator. So he said, he heard that voice saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, and what you see, John, write in a book. Now that word book, when you look it up in the Strauss Concordance, actually means a roll or a scroll. They, they didn't have books like we have them. Uh, today. So it was actually, he actually told him, write this on a scroll and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, not the continent of Asia, but Asia Minor, what we call modern day Turkey, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now, these seven churches existed at the time of the writing. And as we go into those particular churches, we're going to learn how Christ had a message for each one. And that those the, the study of the seven churches can be used even in our time. Now, you have some people who will say that the seven churches represent the church throughout the seven eras of history. The Bible does not support that. I teach the Bible literally. These seven churches existed at the time of the writing, and Christ had something to say to each one of them. He was either uh, reprimanding them for failing to do the work that he called them to do, or he was complimenting them for being obedient. And like I said, God willing in the future, we will get into that. Anyway, uh, verse 12. John says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. 13. And in the midst, or in the middle of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, which is a term that refers to Christ most times, clothed with a garment, which means clothing, down to the foot, and girt about the paps, the paps being his chest, with a golden girdle. So John said he turned around to see this void, see who was talking to him, and he saw Jesus standing in his glorified body in the middle of seven golden candlesticks. And as we continue, Christ is going to tell us exactly what those candlesticks represent. I want you to remember this. Anytime you find symbology being used in the Bible, you will find somewhere in the Bible scriptures that tell you exactly what those symbols represent. So the Bible is not as complicated as some people would have you believe. Actually, the Bible is put in such a simplistic way I say it's a book for dummies. Now, understand what I mean when I say that. God is more intelligent than all of us. And so he had to put the word in such a simple way where we could understand it. That's what I mean when I say that. And so when people tell you the book of Revelation is deep, it's too deep to understand, they don't know what they're talking about. Our Heavenly Father would not have a book written that you and I could not understand. It would defeat the purpose of having the book written. Anyway, John saw Jesus in a glorified body and his 
uh, priestly gab standing in the middle of seven golden candlesticks. Uh, thir uh, 14, John says his head and his hairs were white like wool. You see that? As white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now this is Christ in his glorified body, okay? 15, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burnt in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. That was 16, verse 17. And when I saw him, John says, I fell at his feet as dead. He says, when I saw him in his glorified body, I just dropped down like a dead man. Boom. That's how powerful our God is. And so people kill me talking about what they're going to do when they meet God. I'm going to tell them this. I'm going to ask them that. You're not going to do nothing but bow down because of the power that illuminates from the Holy Spirit. The whole head is lit up brighter than the sun. You're going to fall down to the ground like a dead man. That's what's going to happen. Anyway, it says, And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, Jesus says. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen and have the keys of hell and of death. He says, I have overcome, in other words, John. I have the keys of hell and death. Don't be afraid. I accomplished the task that the Father sent me to accomplish. Then he says in uh, verse 19 to John, write the things which thou hast seen. Write the things you have seen, and the things which are, the things present, and the things which shall be hereafter. So he said, I want you to write down what you have seen, what you're seeing now, and the things I'm going to tell you about concerning the future. So he sets up the chronological order of the book of Revelation with that statement. Verse 20, now he tells us exactly what the golden candlesticks are, uh, uh, symbols of, and also the five, I mean the seven stars that was in his right hand. Uh, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. Now, get this now. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. You see how simple that is? It is not complicated. He tells us exactly what the seven stars represent. They're the angels of the seven churches. Now, we need to know that the word angel doesn't always apply to a spiritual being. Because when we look up the word angels in the Strong's Exhausted Concordance of the Bible, we see it's the Greek word 32, and it means a messenger. It says especially an angel by implication, a pastor. So we're going to see when we get into the second chapter and the third chapter of the book of Revelation that the angel of these churches was actually a pastor. And so Christ had a message for each pastor of those seven churches. And the word churches, when we look it up in the Strong's Concordance, is the Greek word 1577. It's pronounced ekklesia. And it means a calling out that is concretely a popular meeting, especially a religious congregation, Jewish synagogue, or Christian community of members on earth, or saints in heaven, or both. So that's exactly what he was talking about there. The seven stars were the seven pastors, and the seven golden candlesticks were those seven churches that were in Asia Minor. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account, and then you can also download the PayPal 
app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go, use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry and I need your support saints so please do that and last but not least it just came to my mind if you really were blessed by a Bible study video take the time to put something in the comment section it encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain and God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store check out the t-shirts the hoodies the women tees the cups if you see something you like buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go and you're also blessing this ministry as well so until next time this is minister Barton Aaron Porter saying may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.